let's respond to something. This post on Instagram stuck out and I want to talk about it. We have literal poisons in our modern environment that are killing people. Cancer, heart disease, uh, suicide, depression, all these things are at record levels. Do you think that our modern environment doesn't have anything to do with it? Obviously that's rhetorical. Now to what extent it does, it's hard to say. We don't really have the technology or the ability to do the research, you know, to do an interventional study and inject somebody with, you know, like chemtrails or fluoride for years on end and see what happens. Same with vaccines, whatever. Even though there's a lot of research around vaccines, <laughs> should be very startling for people. Yeah, that gets swept under the rug because you can't sue vaccine companies and this and that, but I don't even want to talk about that. So here's this post from Ali Zach. Now she gets a lot of hate because she goes out there and says stuff and it's controversial. And I've never really say hear her say anything that I don't agree with. You know, whether or not there is conspiracy theory or how deep it goes, it's always muddy. We don't know. But it doesn't mean that the core message or the core thing is not a problem. And that's what people can't comprehend in their brain. They can't delineate the difference between hearing something and it maybe not agreeing with their constitution or they don't want to believe it and needing all the supporting research or data to back it up. I mean, there's a lot of things in this world that are that we can't really prove the research or that we don't have all the data. And we have to sometimes use multiple sources of information to come to what makes the most sense. Sometimes the simplest explanation is the best explanation. I believe that's Occam's razor. So this is from Ali Zek. Genocide is the intentional killing of people. We have food ingredients that cause cancer, poisons like fluoride in our water, chemtrails in our skies. I don't really know what chemtrails are actually. I heard somebody said something about chemtrails being like conspiracy or something. I don't know. But either way, even if that is conspiracy around it and there's some iffy evidence, that doesn't mean that I have to ignore her entire message. And this is a very strong bias that humans fall into. They have to like somebody to hear what they have to say. And that is extremely faulty brain that we have that causes that. Big pharma drugs and vaccines slowly killing us. It is a silent holocaust we are witnessing that many are still unaware of. Now, this is some pretty strong language, and it's going to obviously turn off a lot of people. So somebody that hears this message, they don't want to hear it. They don't want to admit it. They're going to probably pick out something. Let's say they pick out the chemtrails thing, and they, they talk about conspiracy theory, and they use it to discredit her message or her as a person. That is faulty thinking. That's bias. That is... Stupid. It's just stupid. It's 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 lazy. And again, it's don't kill the messenger. The messenger really has nothing to do with the message. You can take the message and run it through your critical thinking framework and come up with, should I believe this? Is it 50-50? Do I agree with some of this? Like come up with your analysis of the message. Over $4.5 billion paid out in vaccine injuries. And probably it's probably higher than that. And there's a lot of people not reporting them. And so what she's saying here is our healthcare system is weaponized and killing people. The third leading cause of death in America is medical error. Oh, she just says that, actually. She says right here, third leading cause of death. And then she talks about a lot of not even getting reported, which is very true. Yeah, so she's talking about how somebody like her gets a lot of these things about people saying she's anti-science and she's not looking at the research or whatever. But there's research on all sides. And then that also doesn't account for the fact that there's a lot of very bad research. People still believe, the masses still believe that eating saturated fat is bad for you. When eating saturated fat is one of the healthiest nutrients you can eat and you need it. A lot of people believe red meat is bad. Red meat is one of the most nutrient-dense foods on planet Earth for humans. Oysters and maybe certain shellfish, certain small whole animals, sardines, things like that are very nutrient-dense. I don't know how they compare on a macro-to-macro -macro basis or a mineral basis to something like red meat, but it's in the top five list of most nutrient-dense foods on the planet, yet it's been demonized and connected to heart disease, even though it has literally nothing to do with heart disease other than it prevents heart disease. Eating a lot of really good steak will prevent heart disease, whereas eating high-carb sugar and all these other refined grains and crap and seed oils that's in the food system that Big Pharma, that the government, that the USDA, that all these morons have told you is how you should eat, that is killing millions of people. It's like 600 people a year die from heart disease. Do you want to know the number one reason that people die from heart disease is poor nutrition. Same thing with cancer. Cancer is at like, I think it's 400,000 to 500,000. And then we have medical error, which for a lot of people shouldn't be in the medical system at all. Poor nutrition is the leading cause of death. Who's responsible for that? Scientists, research papers, the government, crony capitalism and politics with all the big food companies, big pharma. There's a meme going around lately that I'll try to find. It's something like if people started eating real food, it is estimated that like 10 major pharmaceutical companies would go bankrupt overnight or something like that. Literally so true. So let's go through a couple of these comments and maybe we can find something entertaining and informative. I thought my government loved me and wanted what's best for me. What the F? 
Democide is the word to describe this. Death by government, slow edition. That's good. I like that. I was writing today about how governments kill people. They either kill them fast or they kill them slow. But governments are responsible for more deaths than pretty much anything in history. Religion is up there, but religion can't compare to like World War I and II, which were deaths at the hands of government. All by design, make them sick and frail so they depend on us so we can better control them. After my dad's death woke me up big time, everything here in America is cheap and disgusting. Every time I step in the grocery store, pharmacy store, beauty skincare store, even at the conventional doctor offices, I get cringe seeing people buy dirty and toxic. That's how people expose with cancers, chronic illness, overweight, BC every day. About 80% I use clean, non-toxic ingredients at home, while 20% I eat crap, toxic food because it's difficult to find clean food in the restaurant. Well, it's not difficult, but soon we're going to have a world run by 13 families that we will have to bow down to. Our food won't even have the nutrients to grow full size. We will resort to vaccines as an outlet, but the result will be more destruction. Once again, the world ruled by capitalist families. We won't be able to recover, et cetera. The problem is, is it's not capitalism's fault. It's crony capitalism and crony politics fault. That's what people don't understand. There was a truly free market and there was no connection between commerce and government. We wouldn't have all the crazy power gobbling up things that we have. We wouldn't have the fiat dollar system, the massive Ponzi scheme that's used to control the world, basically. So it's not capitalism. It's crony capitalism and crony politics. Okay, so before our medical systems and advancements in pharmaceuticals and drug therapies, humans just lived till the age of 100, question mark. So how to address this? Humans today are artificially propped up, and a lot of the things that are artificially propping them up are also killing them at the same time. It's this weird like parasitic relationship where you eat your toxic foods and then big pharma creates these things to like mitigate symptoms for as long as possible. And they basically keep you frail, weak, sick for just longer periods of time. Medical advancements and drugs and things like that save lives for sure. But that's at this point, a small percentage of the medical system and of the deaths and these things in general. We now have deaths that are a result of medicine, that are a result of big pharma and, and drugs. And that are a result of big food and the mass scale that our food system has become. We now have diseases by having too much. So there's obviously diminishing returns. Big medical, big pharma is going to result in lots and lots of deaths. Small medical and small pharma and a holistic system of preventative medicine is going to give us a net positive and more people saved and more people living longer lives, et cetera. But what we need is a focus on not spending for healthcare and drugs and things like that, but spending on food, lifestyle, fitness, health, sunlight, clean water, et cetera. But those things aren't always cheap and convenient and fast. They're not as always dopamine rewarding. They require effort. They require skill, learning how to cook, things like that. So people opt for the cheap options that are killing them and they buy the drugs to prop them up. So yes, there's been medical advancements, but at this point, most of medicine and the reason your health insurance is insane and the reason they even talk about socialized healthcare is because of all those millions of people that are getting the drip of convenience and fake food and then going to the healthcare system to prop them up, that's then a drain on all of us healthy people. This is the thing that nobody's talking about. They wanna just pay for it. They wanna just put more money into it. They wanna just tax more people. They wanna make it universal, all these things, but we shouldn't have the need for it in the first place. Hospitals, emergency rooms, police, fire. Think about how many times in your life you've had to call the cops or fire or police or whatever. How many times in your life have you dialed 911? That's how often we need those services. We don't need doctors unless we have some kind of major issue or we break our leg or something else traumatic happens. We go to a doctor, we get the advancements of science that help us fix this thing so we can get back to normal. And our normal life includes not going to the doctor, not taking drugs, eating real food, going outside, etc. That's all I'm gonna share for this one. There'll be a link below if you wanna scour this post. Subscribe, please, so you can get more videos like this and we can build a relationship together. I wanna help you wake up and see through all the nonsense in our modern world and how it's killing you and killing your family. I'm gonna help you wake up to that. I'm Colin Stucker, I'll see you in the next one. Hey, hey, Colin here, got a freebie for you. Click on the button below to go to the ancestralmind.com and download the seven principles of living wild. This is a short PDF that's got some of the main principles such as real food, sleep, movement, and a couple more that are gonna help you live more ancestrally in accordance with your genes.